In the previous video, we discussed concepts of anonymity and neutrality in voting systems, but we also saw examples in real life where we do allow voting systems to lack anonymity and lack neutrality. What I'd like to talk about in this video is what happens when we push those concepts to the extreme. If we take the concept of anonymity and we push it to the extreme, what happens is we have a voting system that we call a dictatorship. And what a dictatorship is, is when there is one voter whose preferences are so strong that they actually determine the entire group choice, and it's not worth anyone else voting. Where you could see a system like this working in real life is when you start talking about companies and their shareholders. When you have someone who has numerous shares in a company, they get more say than somebody who just has a tiny share in what happens to that company. If you were to find someone who owned more than 50% of the shares in the company, then that person would be considered a dictatorship when it comes to making decisions over the others. And this little infographic here imagines theoretical shareholders one of whom has something like 55% ownership in the company. And if this person happened to be against this proposition, should we invest in a new $2 million factory extension? If this person is against, but every single other shareholder is for, it doesn't matter. They have enough say, they have over 50%, and their decision goes despite the will of the others. And this is an example of what we would call a dictatorship, a single voter who has so much power that all of the collective will of the others is entirely ignored. On the other hand, we can have a voting system that pushes neutrality to the extreme, and that voting system would be a monarchy. So a monarchy is a social choice system where one candidate always wins, regardless of all voter preference. So one example I could imagine, which is a silly example, but doesn't come from voting, would be imagining that you have some sort of wedding and you have people telling those who are catering the wedding their preference if they would like a vanilla cupcake or a chocolate cupcake. Every single person in that room can vote vanilla if they want, but if this is the collection of cupcakes that are in the back of the store, that's all anybody's getting. So this is a system where every single voter preference is ignored. The people voting are the people who are saying what type of dessert they want. It's not that any of them has a tremendous amount of power. It's that in the back, we don't even have an option for what they're asking for, and they're going to get a chocolate cupcake no matter what. The candidates that they're voting on have an unequal distribution of power pushed to the extreme. So in summary, we have these concepts of anonymity, neutrality, and when they're pushed to the extreme, systems that are not anonymous become dictatorships. And when the concept of neutrality is pushed to the extreme, we get systems where we have a monarchy. And the difference between these two spectrums is who has all of the power in that system. Is it a single voter that has all the power? In that case, what you're looking at is a dictatorship, or is it a single candidate who has all of the power? In that case, you're looking at a monarchy. And as it can be with these types of things, it almost feels less like a spectrum and more like a circle. Concepts that have been pushed so far to one extreme almost seem like they are the same. There isn't, in fact, much difference between a dictatorship and a monarchy because both of them are so far gone from a voting system that the process of voting hardly matters. It's just a slight difference over who has the power in that system. Is it a single voter or somebody who's being voted upon? Now, so far we've given some examples of systems that are not anonymous, but that have not been pushed as far as becoming a dictatorship. And similarly, we've discussed systems that are not neutral, but have not been pushed as far as becoming a monarchy. In general, as we proceed in these videos, 
we're going to want to consider things that are as fair as possible on the voter and candidate bias spectrum, and we'll want to consider systems that are anonymous and systems that are neutral. And because we're very mathematically minded, one way that we could force a system to become both anonymous and neutral is a very silly way of doing that. And that would be to say, okay, we've looked at the will of everybody, we've looked at all of the candidates, and the only way to possibly be fair is to make no decision. This is a little bit similar to the example that we started the video with of if there is no strong preference for one candidate over the other, or if in the process, of voting, we find that we're very near a dead tie, perhaps the only thing that we could think of to be fair is to say a decision cannot be made at this time because there are too many different preferences within the voting system. And making that type of decision, a non-decision, can seem very fair. It does treat all of your voters and all of your candidates equally in saying, I just can't make a decision because there is disagreement here. However, we generally don't appreciate that in voting systems, or we want that type of outcome to be rare. So when we talk about voting systems, another collection of words that we'll use are the words decisive and nearly decisive. A decisive voting method or social choice system means that we always determine a winner. No matter what the voter preferences are, a winner will be declared. Now, a decisive voting system can be a bad thing. A very simple example would be if you have two people voting and the two people voting disagree, a decisive system would need to make a decision in that case. And so it would have to do something like flipping a coin to determine the winner. And sometimes that can seem unfair. So if you wanted to create a voting system that almost always determines a winner with one exception, which is when you have a dead set tie amongst all candidates, a voting system that makes a decision all the time except in the situation of a dead set tie is called a nearly decisive system. And for the most part moving forward, we will require our voting systems to be anonymous, neutral, and nearly decisive.